Go ahead and hit him. <laughs> Parental discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem <laughs> Show. This is Sorg here as always. Mayhem is simple. We are back. We are <laughs> back, and it's feeling good right now. Uh, with us, as always, is Mr. DJ What? That's right, folks. It's DJ What? Captain America, uh, Bandersnitch, Cumberbun Sandwich, and I am here to remind you to fuck your vitamins and eat your teachers. This is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, the finest and best podcast anywhere on the internet. Mayhem, assemble! And also with us it, from San Antonio, Texas, is Watsky Fan. Hey, it's me here with a new background and a new microphone. Yes, yeah, I'm fancy. Just ignore the words that are below my face. I don't know why they're there. It's just some weird stuff. It's a wrestling mayhem show. I like how you got a cat to match uh, DJ Lunchboxes. Exactly. And also with us is the Riz. I don't have a video. I'm right here in studio. Well, in my studio. But... I got a new computer over the or not a new battery over the break, so I'm ready to go. Let's do this. Fantastic. Let's get naked. Also with us with the uh, from the smashing insert coin to begin is Mr. Chachi of Chachi or insert coin to begin dot com. <laughs> are you, I want to say if Chachi are says you, dot you, net. Insert Chachi to begin. Insert me to begin. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> where are we gonna wow. stick you? Oh man. Uh, no, insert coin to begin. We are in the middle, or at the beginning of, not in the middle, but in the, at the beginning of a three-part exclusive interview with Mark Mears, who is the talented voice actor behind Commander Shepard of the Mass Effect series. And if you haven't read it, go read it, because he's an, he's an entertaining guy, and he, he doesn't he's Canadian. just... He's Canadian. Yeah, he's Canadian. And he doesn't just portray a nerd. He is a nerd. He's a comedy nerd, too. Like, I mean, uh, the guy customizes action figures and creates his own costumes. Has he and customized... He plays with himself. Has he customized an action figure of himself? I don't know. I wasn't... Didn't get into that? No. Uh, okay. That's a paradox. But he does play as himself when he plays Mass Effect the series. That's cool. Because he, he did admit that he spends a lot of time gaming. Well, it's like if you were a wrestler and you're in the wrestling game, who are you going to play as? Yeah. Ghostbusters. <laughs> Team Punk. No, not Ghostbusters. That's weird. Hey, guys, you stumbled on the Wrestling Mayhem Show because nobody gets here on purpose. Uh, we're at the WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, wait, wait I show up on purpose. <laughs> Except for Chachi. <laughs> He's still here. Um, and, of course, uh, Twitter, at Mayhem Show. We're on Facebook. We're on Google+. You can actually join us in the Google Plus Hangout. If uh, you follow us on there, we'll circle you back, and you'll we're get the invite everywhere. here. Live Tuesday nights at live.sogatronmedia.com starting at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. We Give have or lots take. Of fun. More or less. More or less. We're around awesome about time. Ca awesome cast goes. How we're doing. How many times DJ Lunchbox has already started the show. Um, <laughs> things like twice. that. So far twice. Yes. <laughs> also, hey, drop us an email over at goodtimes good at good for one two times a symbol. <laughs> 412-206-WMS0 that's 9670 9670 if you want to drop a line to the voicemail everyone but freaky <laughs> no <laughs> invite all of you just doesn't mean we're gonna we're gonna play it um and 
And yeah, you check us out. We're on iTunes. We're on YouTube, of course. Blip TV, the Roku box, Stitcher, uh, so you can get all your mayhem needs. And also check out the app. Support the show if you're liking this. Riz is holding it up right there on his iPhone. It's on your Android device in the Amazon App Store as well. Um, it's a Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold. Uh, it's, it's only $1.09. It gives you uh, access to all the things we talked about so you can... Uh, drunk dial us with a button press uh you can check out the mayhem gold that is uh stuff that's not on the show us just kind of going off before between and after the show and uh all that kind of stuff so go check that out and support us so let's get kick it off like we usually do with the fan mails and uh yeah let's go with the one that's probably going to uh take us up in a half an hour <laughs> does anybody have dibs on the vim mail i do he does. He does. I never uh, actually caught it. Of course, Vim from across the pond over in London, who I understand is coming to Miami shortly. Oh, come over on, the phone. Oh, Miami. 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 He's a little late for WrestleMania. <laughs> what what I miss? <laughs> what what, the city what happened? Where's the Rock? I I. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What? Um, you good, Chach? Shut your mouth. You good, Chach? Not yet. You gonna read wow. this? Yeah, should, I'm, should I'm reading the... it. I'm reading it. Hold on. Are you gonna read it to the rest of us? I'm going to as soon as it loads. Okay. That's my, what she said. My phone is acting like. Uh, it, there it is. This Dang week, it. one question. But Chachi, I love you too. Can someone be considered a great wrestler, or should it be really limited to saying someone took part in a great program? I'll discuss, then I'll have my say. Okay. Sorg! Hmm. What? A or B? <laughs> a or B? Uh, wait, so A is... Um, great wrestler. Can someone be considered a great wrestler? Or, or a great wrestler or, B, or a great program. Yeah, is it limited well, to the program that they're involved in? I think great in? wrestlers are considered for what they do, not just in the ring. Mm-hmm. So when I think, man, Hulk was the greatest, it's from the... What he did, the reactions, the build-ups to, like, WrestleMania 3, say. If I say uh, Jericho's a great wrestler, it's because of In the Ring and, like, we think about his run with Shawn Michaels last summer. So, I guess that kind of answers it. Just kind of an all-around So, you're thing. saying both. I'm See? saying both. I'm saying both. <laughs> See, I think people can be a great wrestler without being involved in a great program. Yeah. Example, Repo Man. <laughs> Barry Darso, Smash of Demolition. Great wrestlers. Great wrestler. No program. No well, program. What are you talking about? You're talking about one I'm of the greats. Johnson. You're talking about legend status, <laughs> or you're just talking about yeah, that guy's a pretty good hand. I mean, there's a lot of pretty good hands that are like the job squad on superstars. For yeah, as so long mean. as wrestling is around, there will be someone there that remembers the Repo Man. <laughs> <laughs> I have another example. Okay. The Brooklyn Brawler. For as long as there's wrestling, someone will remember no, the Brooklyn no, Brawler. But is that Barry because Horowitz. he's a good wrestler? Or is it just because he's the Brooklyn Brawler? Listen, can week you, in and week out on have? WWE Superstars on Saturday morning, the Brooklyn Brawler would go out there and he would put on a clinic, an absolute <laughs> wrestling got his ass kicked a lot clinic with the likes of Brett the Hitman Hart and uh, Brett the Hitman Hart. And I Don't honestly have Brett the no Hitman memory Hart. of wrestling anyone else but Brett. But man, so good. So good. How about yeah. Barry Horowitz? Yep, Barry Horowitz. But he was thinking else. He and was a freaking just, I mean, horseman. Yeah, I mean, not just, not just those guys, though. I mean, like, you look at it like... I, I can't judge a person of how great a wrestler is by the program that they're in. Jamie Noble, I can't say he's a horrible wrestler because he was never in a good program. Jamie you know? Noble. Mm. That's, I mean, like, that's the way... I, not even, like, the whole jobbers, like Barry Horowitz or, you know, whatever, but just, like... Those people that never really did anything doesn't mean they're bad wrestlers. True, true, true. I have to agree with Sorg. I think it works both ways. Yeah. I think you can be a you can be a good wrestler without a great program, and you can be in a great program and be a crap wrestler. Mm-hmm. Exactly. exactly. Okay, so to continue the email, Batista, would you say he is a great wrestler, 
Or was he just in really great programs with Cena, with him being the best heel he could be, and Triple H being the best face he could be? Scott St Scott Steiner. I'm not sure of much of his work in WCW, but he had an awesome program with Stacey Keebler and Test. I'll, I'll, I'll address the Scott Steiner one. Uh, I, I think it's the other way around. Great wrestler, horrible programs. <laughs> What brought like, this up honest, for me? Have you seen oh, his promos? Well, I mean, they are because Scott Steiner's fucking out of his mind, and yes, he's insane, and we laugh at him. Yes, that's fine. But I'm talking like, look past like blonde haired, short, short blonde haired Scott Steiner from WCW. That man was a great wrestler. He that is a reason they call that move the Frankensteiner. You know, it's he, he, but then he got into all this like weird stuff in WCW where, it, and it's kind of like how, like we tell, we say, oh, wrestlers, they need to be like an extension of themselves. Those are usually the best wrestlers. Steiner, not so much. <laughs> well, well, if you're crap as a person to begin with, then you're not going to be a good wrestler in the end. Well, Character. I'm not saying he's a person. That's not true. Hulk Hogan is an awful person. There's an awesome, there's an awesome wrestler that may or may there's an awesome wrestler that may or may not have killed his family. Sorg. That doesn't mean he's not a great wrestler. Okay. What brought this up for me was seeing an old Undertaker promo, <laughs> where he was halting in his delivery and made little sense. Is he a great wrestler, or is he just involved in amazing programs because he makes sure the programs make sense and lead to good matches? I'm sure if even the worst wrestler were involved in a year-long build to a one-off match, it would be good. Edge. Is this more clear? Anyway, much love to all, except to the guy who sounds like he hasn't hit puberty yet. Oh, hey, 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 side to that, as far as, uh... uh I'm just reading what the email awesome, says. Awesome, awesome, uh, builds that led to shit matches. Sting Hogan. Yep. Oh, shit oh. match at the end, but my god, we wanted to see it. Yeah, Hogan and uh, Piper. Yeah, yeah. One of the one of the WCW ones. Uh. Any of the, like the Hogan matches in WCW. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I mean, well, for long, well, for that was the greatest thing because everybody wanted to see him beat for the longest time, or I don't know. So yeah. Um, was there more? Did I miss? No, that was my yeah. Where was, am I at? I'm sorry. That was, I was the end of the email. Else. That's why this thing's in my ear. That was the end of the email. That was the end of the email. Yes. LB, I think you had dibs on one here. That's true. For right. two weeks. Hit it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be sweet. Sweet. Do uh, it. Anyway, uh, first it was Rock, then Brock, maybe Doc. Hendrix is next for Cena. Greetings, Mayhem Nation. First of all, I'd like to express my multitudes of gratitude without a magnitude of platitudes <laughs> to tarnish my attitude wow. concerning the aforementioned gratitude for my mayhemy. I really appreciate you guys for giving the fans a forum to plot, I'm sorry, pilot their soapboxes and rant for the sake of humor. It's nice having a place to vent sarcasm about a, about a product that is near and dear. No acceptance would be complete without thanking the writing staffs of TNA and WWE, without whose dedication, or lack thereof, would make <laughs> Cena sensationalization or the Country Bear Jamboree work. Thanks again, guys. I plan to use my Mayhemi as a catalyst to launch my plans for global domination, or at least proof to my friends that DJ Lunchbox, Chachi, The Riz, Wheels, WrestleFan and Sorg are real people and not my imaginary friends. They think AJ <laughs> is a wrestler who and Bobby there, is Bobby? from Doctor Who. Huh? Aww. I, <laughs> I would like to go on record that not since Flair and Steamboat have I enjoyed a match as much as the Chicago Street Fight from the pay-per-view. Why Chris Jericho wants to walk away from WWE in his prime to be an, in an opening act bar band is beyond me jericho has always been stellar but this time and that guy punk is history in the making jericho leaving is like eddie van halen deciding to play kazoo and be a birthday clown <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> sorry go ahead <laughs> although i think cena will be going far away for a while to see if absence makes the heart grow fonder i hope lesnar isn't going to hang around i enjoyed lesnar when he was in the company before but now Okay, here's the deal. Brock Lesnar is Mike Tyson. You see, Tyson was a boxing 
demon, a human chainsaw, just destined to be one of the greats like Ali. But Tyson started buying into his own hype. He surrounded himself with lackeys who talked him up all the time until he started believing everything he was told. I'm the greatest. Nobody can ever beat me. Laws are for regular people. Until he sold himself, oh, until he had sold himself that he could do anything and people would love him. I think that's what Lesnar is suffering from now. I know the face of the WWE and that stuff is part of the work, but I would bet Lesnar is a little more self deluded than the front office is aware. Have a great show, guys. Sonic Screwjob. P.S. S. Lawler versus Daniel Bryan. Was Kurt Hawkins busy? Congrats to the new tag champs. I would like to submit Boom Jimity as their name. That was Triple H's signing arm, wasn't it? I think Sheamus beat Brian in 18 seconds arrest at WrestleMania because he didn't want to get sunburned in the open air arena. <laughs> there you go. And we got one from Mr. Tech Wood Drive to the WMS Nation. I can't believe why Big Show lost the tables match for the IC title. Uh, in in the name of Magnum TA, why did he put his foot on the table and drop kick Cody Rhodes? Uh, <laughs> I mean, he goes in uh, talking about what uh, about about the the table. Um, <laughs> also, it's nice to have Brock Lesnar back in the ring after being in UFC for a while. However, it came up short where Super Cena remained the face of the company and decided to take a vacation to avoid political talk with Johnny H and Theodore R. Long, which, as we saw since his email was sent, is false. Uh, but one thing was on my mind. Why the hell, why in the hell the Midnight Express and the Rock and Roll Express did both did both get their heads bloodied up? Is it the PG era has come to an end? Plus, congrats to Punky for beating Y2J and retaining a spinner belt and proving why he is drug-free. Um, yeah, I think we've been out of the PG era for a while, and that was The yeah. Rock's fault. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> it's, not even, it's not even the PG era. It was sort of an era. It was sort of the let's not do stupid shit era. Well, yeah. Well, no, there was excessively PG, but now it was like, okay. And, and as far as, like, the touch-ups they did have to do on Cena, um, I think there was kind of a commission thing now. They kind of have yeah. to with blood and everything. Um, so, I mean, you're going to see that. You're going to see those patch-up jobs and matches from now on just because they're just... I mean, the first thing you saw was, like, the referee put their gloves on. I mean, because they are such a public company, which I don't think we've seen that in TNA yet. They definitely do blood. I don't know. But, well, the, but he got pretty bad gash to begin with. So... Yeah. It's, it's not, because he didn't blade. Yeah, no, that was legit. That was <laughs> that was Brock yeah, Lesnar they... just elbowed me in the side of the head and it cut. <laughs> yeah, that's why they could show the full slow motion impact elbow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was for real. Planned or not, that was what it was. Um, and it, man. <laughs> All right, and he's got a little Besides. more about the pay-per-view. We won't go into it here. Uh, thanks, PRK, a.k.a. Mr. Techwood Drive. We got one more email here <sighs> that anybody but Riz can can read. I'll do it. <laughs> anybody but Riz. <laughs> go for it. Hey, guys. First, I want to remind everyone of the severity of Riz being an ass. You all might want to look into that. I want everyone to be honest. You are all secretly looking forward to the possible Kane Great Kali food, aren't you? Anthony J. Distiller, Crescent PA. I agree. Why would you I agree. Where you live there? It's not I, necessary. I, 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 we can I agree. That could be feud of the year, my friends. And, and, feud and of the year. Go around to the uh, the great wrestler uh, versus program question from them. <laughs> kind of in the long. Yeah. No. Yeah. no. 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 That is not a great program. I don't care what you say. It could maybe oh, Chachi. Come on. Maybe Chachi. surprise you. I'm sorry, Chachi. Chachi I yes, totally me. agree with yes, you. Yes, Lunchbox. Oh, my God. I mean, I'd rather take a Taco Man in salad? chat match. Taco Man Listen, <laughs> you are totally underestimating the power of the Big Red Machine and uh, the Bollywood broski. Okay, stop. <laughs> I'm g- let me stop you there, okay? Jesus, I just wanted to say Bollywood Broski. <laughs> Jesus himself could not make that a good program. <laughs> wow. Well, I don't Listen, think Jesus any, any, was any known any as many, God, many uh, things. No uh, uh, the savior of humanity, the son <laughs> of God, all kinds of things. A great worker, 
Uh, not necessarily amongst those things. Bullshit! He went out of his way to walk on water. End of story. He sold it he, hey, he, well. He, he had an entertaining match that involved even sell drowning. He, he just he, walked on he, it. He had an He sold the whole cross thing. Clock. He had an entertaining match involving the spirit That was, spirit spelling, that was hard way. <laughs> All right, I, love, I love where this, this is going, and WrestleFan is going, trying so hard to make a real point. This is going out of this is <laughs> yeah. fan never makes a this point. is this Moving is out of out of control. But seriously, no, he, yeah, he, we have he, to, so we are actual church going folk, <laughs> and we're mm. Jesus yeah. didn't tap. That's all I'm saying. Two, you, you two are like the ones I know go to church every week, and <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> You you have to laugh at yourself and things that you do, or else it's just not going to be entertaining. Oh my! Okay, okay. <laughs> Could we call that the feud uh, Bebop versus uh, Krang? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Close your mouth, Sorg. There we go. I think with that, we we had a new caller uh, that started with us. We did? You better not call me an ass either. <laughs> no, we did. <laughs> no, you better not. I was not able to call during your broadcast. Um, I am very busy right now trying to prepare for my uh, new pay per view. It's the first pay per view of People Power. I just wanted to call and say I've been listening to your show. And, uh, Mike, I don't appreciate what you've been saying about me. And I just wanted to put that out there. I just believe that Brock Lesnar is going to be the new face of Monday Night Raw. Starring Brock Lesnar. This is the best business decision I have ever made. And this will definitely pick up the WWE to maintain its spot on top. Thank you. Well, there you go. We have a John Laurinaitis caller now. Uh, wait, let's turn my shit. mic on. So, uh, Super, Super Dave sounds great. Oh man! What's that? <laughs> Super Dave sounds great. There you go. Healthy. Slash Super Dave. Um, wow. <laughs> Excellent. Things that are more interesting than John Laurinaitis. Um, John Jesus. No, Jesus versus Kane in a Hell in a Cell <laughs> match. No, Inferno match. <laughs> Jesus uh, versus Kane in a tuxedo match, for that matter. Hey, uh, speaking of. Uh, uh, specialty matches. If, if if never mind. What? what? Uh, I, I was gonna make a joke said, and then the joke failed in my head, so I stopped. Okay, he's like, wait, I didn't laugh at that internally. Let's just yeah, this. we're moving on. Uh, LP, what what was that you were saying about the translation? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. No, Berg, I sent it to you as a Skype message because I didn't want to say it on the air. You realize the Skype is behind me. Yes, I'm aware. <laughs> Look at it later. Look at it later. And let's move it along. All right, moving it along. What's next? What's next? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing? That's, nope. That's Do we all go to the, break? That's no, all the emails. Let's end the show. Of the show. It's been a week. It, it's been an extra week. I don't remember how this, this show goes. Um, Russell fan, do you do something? I think no, it's yeah. my... Nope. Is this the time where I do things? No, no, this doesn't. Oh, yes, that doesn't yeah. sound right. Oh, it doesn't? Okay. No, no. I, 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 you're right, it doesn't sound no, right. No, that doesn't sound right at all. I'm pretty sure WrestleFan never does anything. He just sits there and looks like Watsky all episode. <laughs> and, oh, uh, sitting there looking like Watsky. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's it. I, that's all WrestleFan is here for. I, I, Ch Chachi would know. Okay, so, uh, so do we end the show now? Um, yeah, that's it, the show. Goodbye, see you next week. Uh, <laughs> is there other things? Out. Are there other things that we're supposed to... I don't know. What do we normally do? Maybe, uh, well, well, wait, wait, wait. Don't we, don't, we don't we do something with... Uh, I don't know. It's like, it's like what we talk about, but it's the amateur version? No. Um, um, I think no. it's the... Um, um, that doesn't sound well, right at all. Does it? No. Um, don't, we, is it, don't we call it like amateur falling down? Or at least... I, no, I, I, no, think, I think Not it's me, but I think some people down. call it amateur falling down. down. No, that doesn't no. that doesn't sound right at all. I'm sorry, that doesn't sound entertaining, and therefore I don't think it's right. <laughs> headlines. I, no, no, no. Not yeah, it's headlines. time for the headlines. Bobby, get reading. Is it? Is this the in the year two thousand bit? In the year two thousand. 
Wow, uh, copyright we, infringement. Wrestle fan, amateur falling down. Go! Oh, in the, in the minute because man. that's sort of... I don't want to... Yeah. Um, so the Tried first thing I'm going to talk it. about for uh, this week's Indie Minute is ROH has a pay-per-view, uh, iPay-per-view that will be coming out this uh, weekend uh, entitled Border Wars, which will be in Toronto, Canada. Um, it's going to be a definitely a great event with the main event for the Ring of Honor World Championship. Davey Richards defending against um, Kevin Steen uh, for the Ring of Honor World Championship. Also, television title match, uh, Roderick Strong will defend against Fit Finley. So that is uh, that's definitely going to be a really great stuff. You can order the iPay-Per-View for Saturday, May 12th at 7.30. Uh, go to ROHWrestling.com in order to get more information. Uh, and go check them out and you know see tell us what you think of the pay-per-view. I, w- um, I want to put out there, um, I don't know if you caught this, uh, they, they're advertising right on the front page, free video of CM Punk versus Brian Danielson. Oh, uh, I didn't see that. Yes. So go check very, that out as well. Very cool. So um, th- definitely check them out. And uh, the next thing I want to mention is for those, uh, obviously we have a lot of friends in the uh, Ohio area. Uh, AIW, our friends over there, this weekend, uh, May 11th and 12th, they will be holding their JT Lightning Invitational Tournament event, uh, obviously in tribute to uh, the passing of JT Lightning, who was a very influential part in a lot of uh, a lot of wrestlers' careers in the uh, Cleveland area. Uh, they, they're having a two-night tournament uh, to uh, celebrate, and the winner of the tournament will receive a shot at the absolute title. Go check them out. There's a lot of friends of the show in this tournament, including, uh, I believe, Gregory Iron, Matt Cross, um, a lot of great ones. A lot of Chikara stars are in there. Some some stars from ACW up in here in Texas are going to be participating in that. Um, so it's it's going to be a fun night. Uh, go check them out. Uh, AIWrestling.com will get your tickets. And that's May 11th and May 12th in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. You can definitely go check them out. Uh, the next thing I'm to talk sort of on the local front in the uh, in the Pennsylvania area, uh, I believe that uh, um, RWA's got a big event coming up uh, entitled uh, No Retreat 4 on May 19th. Uh, yes, May 19th. Uh, very rest- uh, wrestling field night. May uh, 19th. Which, which will feature uh, special guest Lodi, um, former WCW star. Uh, you know, rock, who was rocking it with Lenny Lane back in the day for those who actually watched WCW back in that day. Um, so yeah, go, uh, uh, go check them out. That's going to be in West Newton, PA. Uh, I, I have a feeling it's really going to be a great event. And I also want to point out that this video right here on the front page with Mr. Jock Sampson uh, is a little bit of instructional ring rant stuff going on there. So just a moment. Yes, I, I, I've been doing this study. So for your research, I know it's ongoing, Mr. Russell fan. Or Watsky fan. Or uh, Watsky fan. Go, go check that out at rwbalive.com. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, and then also in the uh, in the, sort of that area, our friends over at IWC, they have an event coming up May 20th uh, in Newell, West Virginia for Mountain State Madness 2, uh, which is going to be a great event. Uh, Jimmy DeMarco and Jason Gorey will be taking on uh, Michael the Bomber Facade and Logan Shulo in a street fight. Shulo! Shulo! Uh, so it's going to be a lot That's of great stuff. A lot of friends. Match. <laughs> a lot of friends of the show. Um, there's some women's action in there. You know, you're going to you're going to oh, see a lot yeah. of great stuff. That's in Newell, West Virginia, May 20th. Uh, go check them out. Sorgatron Media will be in attendance for that event. Yes, we will. So we will. it's uh, oh, uh, well, uh, not Okay, we won't, but somebody well, representing us. Sorgatron Media will be representing. Sorgatron Media. Uh, Missy will be there. At Mountain State Madness? Well, we'll both be at Mountain State. Oh. I'm sorry, I thought we were talking oh. about RWA. No. I, I, it's, gonna, it's, it's, it's all the same it's weekend. There's a lot going on. I know, on. so much. There's a much. lot going on. I know, Russell, Russell fan, go Media on. Busy, busy people. Go, go on, Russell fan. You're way done? over a minute. Let's go. Are you done yet? No, I'm not done yet. Well, hurry up. You wait your turn. And then the last thing I want to talk about here on the Indie Minute is um, our good friends over at Anarchy Championship Wrestling in Texas. They have an event coming up May 20th. It's one of their biggest events of the year, and it's a very special event. Uh, it will be Nothing is as Real as a Dream, a pro wrestling prom. It is going to be an absolutely amazing show. If you, For those that never experienced the whole full prom show, it's going to be amazing stuff. There's going to be a three-way match. 
uh, between ACH, Sean Vex, and Jacus Pliskin. There will be a evening gown match for you know to fit in with the whole prom theme of the event. Uh, there will be cake. There will be punch. There will be music. Everyone, definitely go check it out if you're in the Austin area. Get dressed up. Have a fun time, and it's going to be really great for uh, Anarchy Championship Wrestling. And that, my friends, is your indie minute for this. Hey, wrestle fan, just a second. Oh, wait, just one second. Go ahead. I have something to say. Whoa. Uh, no, wait, hold on. Are I you going to start the show again? Because we've already done that. <laughs> we've already done that part. <laughs> Welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem <laughs> Show. No. Uh, um, no, I just want to add that uh, Ring of Honor uh, at ROHWrestling.com slash shop, they currently have a uh, two-disc collector's edition of the uh, CM Punk and Samoa Joe series uh, wow. that those, those two guys put together. It's a, it's a three-match series. Absolutely incredible. Go out of your way. Uh, lay hands on this DVD. Watch those matches. Uh, if you're a wrestling fan, you'll love it. If you're not a wrestling fan, why are you listening to this show? <laughs> Okay. That's all. All right, Russell fan. Russell fan. Yes. Are you listening? Yep. I, li- I want you to listen very, very carefully because I I'm about oh, yeah. to uh, share a deep dark secret with you. Are you, you going to scream at me? No. He's, I, I'm, he's gonna fart. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this very <laughs> calmly, and and quietly. Farts. Um, I have to be honest with you. For okay. the past two months, I've been telling you good job on the indie minute. <laughs> Okay. Uh-oh. Every week, uh, every week, you you do your thing, and I I sit there and I tell you how good of a job you've been doing, and to keep up the good work, right? Yes, and I appreciate. It. I haven't been fucking listening <laughs> <laughs> for the past for the you past two the for the past two months. <laughs> you say now it's time for the indie minute. I get up. I take my headphones off and I leave the fucking room. The story of betrayal. I come uh, back five minutes talking. later. I come back five minutes later and you're still talking. <laughs> Yet I, I still told you good job. I can't lie to you anymore. Although okay? tonight when he, when he said Great job, Wrestle fan. Although tonight when he said there would be cake and punch, the guy was actually punching someone. Yeah, and the cake is alive. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. There will be cake, punch, So, slaps, yes, chop. Wrestle Fan. Oh, my life is a lie. It is a lie. I'm, I'm, <laughs> wrestle Fan, are you going to cry? The cake is a lie. On I'm, that I'm, note, are we, uh, we clean Wrestle Fan up um, <laughs> as he does his work of shame from that fuck. Um <laughs> Uh, let's go check out uh, what's going on on WMS Gold, and we'll be right back after this with Remember When. Chachi just split WrestleFan in half. <laughs> Are you now? Is it because I'm a fetus? No, it's because of your form spring Twitter post. Oh, come on. Are you had- no, Are fuck you. you. Yeah, no. In the world, no! folks, no! the podcast, no! the end all podcast. I no! see Sword flailing around, freaking out like a crazy person. Doesn't matter because he is muted. And I can't hear him even the tiniest little bit. Now he's just. I will. I will, I will PayPal you a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Three. Uh, no, fuck no, you. Wait, no. Uh, wait. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We are back and we are rocking. How are you doing this evening? And it's time for a little segment that we like to call "Remember When." <laughs> this week, uh, this well, we I thought you were done revolving. Okay, uh, this week on the Mayhem Show, we are gonna, we're going to talk about Paul Heyman. The big news from this week's Monday Night Raw was the fact that Paul Heyman returned to Monday Night Raw uh, as the spokesperson of sorts for Brock Lesnar. He came out. He read a letter. He left, and it was something special. Um, but I we. There was all this talk when Lesnar first came back to the WWE, and one of the words that was being thrown around a lot by, you know, Lesnar and, you know, some the stuff that people were saying is that he was going to bring legitimacy back to WWE. And that can be debated, and that can be, you know, discussed. It's a whole different topic. I'm going to tell you how it's not, and I mentioned this on Twitter before, uh, during Raw last night, 
It's not Brock Lesnar that would bring legitimacy back to the WWE. It is Paul Heyman. And the reason, and it's, and Paul Heyman's proved this in various ways. Go back to November of 2001. Right around the time of the Survivor Series, you know, the, the big invasion angle was about to end. It was the whole WWF versus the Alliance, and everyone's saying, oh, how, you know, this could have been done really well, but it kind of just turned into, like, you know, not really the an invasion angle, because it was weirdly, weirdly, weird, very not well done, said by most. It was an episode of SmackDown. It was the SmackDown right before uh, Survivor Series, which was a big blow off to the whole invasion angle. And Paul Heyman, who was doing commentary with Jim Ross at the time, said that he was going to address Vince McMahon and air his grievances of sorts. And Paul Heyman did what Paul Heyman does, goes out and is absolutely was absolutely amazing on the microphone. You know, called out Vince McMahon for a lot of stuff that us as you know as wrestling fans would you know want somebody to call you know Vince out for, you know, just sort of breaking that fourth wall, getting you know, you know, get dealing with some subjects that weren't really dealt with at the time, and basically, uh, one of the resounding themes from the whole thing was this is awesome. Why couldn't the whole invasion angle been this? Um, which that was you know, and that was. Just to show how much of a genius that Paul Heyman was if he is was given the opportunity to do something. Then the invasion angle ended and Paul Heyman was brought back in order to be the mouthpiece for Brock Lesnar. And he did a great job and like and DJ Lunchbox uh, today posted a very interesting article on WrestlingMayhemShow.com about Paul Heyman and what oh, his I think uh, it's, uh... Exactly. Uh, and what his role should be coming back. <laughs> Coming wow. back into the he WWE, did give the, get the creepiest picture of uh, Paul Heyman possible. He, he's I very, went out yeah. of my way for that. <laughs> that was intentional. <laughs> um, but but you know, talking about how you know he made Brock Lesnar into this phenomenon, made him it's such an important you know important figure. He built him up. He was his mouthpiece, and to the point where like even when he wasn't Lesnar's manager, he was still doing a lot with Lesnar. Like, you know, when he, I remember he had uh, turned on Lesnar at the time to uh, go with the guys with, like, Big Show and Kurt Angle and manage guys like that. But he was always still doing stuff with Lesnar, and he was always improving him, always, you know. And you, and that's the, that's the one thing that, you know, for people that aren't the greatest on the microphone, that need that extra push, you know, people like Heyman are the ones that do it, you know. And that not just, you know, if... Not just directly being someone's manager, but it being involved with them all the time. Even uh, even when he, uh, Heyman became GM of SmackDown, to the point Lesnar left back in two thousand four, Heyman was still there. He was always some. He was always somewhat involved with Lesnar, and I think that's something very important. And then flashback a couple years later in two thousand and six, when the new ECW began to emerge. And it started to really blossom. Hanan was being the spokesperson. And me being at the time, I obviously hadn't been around to see the ECW in its prime. But I had seen stuff, and I had seen the hype, and I saw everything. And I honestly believed in my heart of hearts by listening to guys like Paul Heyman hype you know the new ECW, hype what it was going to be, that this was going to be really something special, that they were, by them, bringing back uh, ECW into the forefront. Um, didn't really turn out that way. <laughs> um, but it was definitely, you know, the fact that Heyman could sell something like that so, you know, amazingly, uh, really just shows how great of a spokesperson Heyman can be. Whether it's for a company, whether it's for a wrestler, whether, you know, whatever he does, he does it to the best of his abilities and he can really take nothing and make it into something. Um, so, yeah, that's a little bit about Paul Heyman. And that is a little segment we call Remember When. Good job, Russell fan. Anybody else have Respect some? the pause. That's right. Go check out uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Great article by DJ Lunchbox. Go check that out and share it with your friends. Uh, Thanks. In the meantime, Thanks, uh, guys. we're going to check out the Mad Mike's Minute of Mayhem. Greetings, Mayhem fans. It's Mad Mike. Once again, with your Minute of Mayhem. I'm going to talk about TNA a little bit because 
I fell a little bit behind because of Avengers and all that stuff. And I had to watch two hours of TNA, uh, four hours of TNA within two or three days to review them for the site. And I gotta admit, it's taken a toll on me. Especially these past two episodes of Impact were awful. I don't care what any of you guys on the show say. If any of you watch TNA and think it's improving, you are fucking delusional and you need to send me whatever it is you're smoking. This gut check bullshit just pisses me off. The open fight night pisses me off. Because if it's an open fight night and you can challenge anyone you want, why isn't everyone challenging Robert Roode? A, he's the most hated man in the company. Two, he's the TNA world champion. Everyone should fucking be challenging him, otherwise TNA doesn't make any sense. Oh, wait, of course it's TNA. It doesn't make any fucking sense. On to gut check. They're trying to do tough enough, and they're failing miserably. To be honest, when they first said Al Snow was going to be the lead trainer, I'm like, okay, that, that's, that could be fine. But then they brought in this kid, Alex Silva, who had a two-minute match... Couldn't even beat Robbie E. They didn't announce who the other judges were while it was going on on the open fight night. So, I mean, I thought it was going to be like the voice where, you know, people are actually on stage watching the match and they judge it right away. And they say, you know what, either you're in or you're not. Which would have been cool. That should be how they do it. But no, instead, it's typical TNA bullshit. They waited till the next week to judge him. Which, by, which already means the kids on two shows. They looked at the match. First of all, you don't even need a unanimous decision to be accepted onto the roster. And thirdly, they they have Ric Flair and Bruce Prichard as the judge. Oh, it was, it was just so fucking bad. They had a segment where they were watching his match backstage and talking about it. And Ric Flair was saying... This guy will never draw a dime, you know, bullshit, all that stuff. Bruce Pritchard was saying, oh, I like this guy. I've seen him in OVW. Well, the thing is, and they were saying, we're not judging him right now. We're judging him potential. I'm sorry. If you're going to give a guy a contract, you're judging for right now. If you're judging for potential, you say, you can't have it now. Come back in a year or so. But they had the thing last week where they determined whether or not he had a contract. Which, by the way, if you wanted to look up Alex Silva and find out who he was the first week he showed up before, you know, they made the decision, you go on Wikipedia, I already said he won gut check. Fine. Way to go, DNA. Another benefit of not being live. So they had Ric Flair say no immediately. Al Snow say yes. Then... Before Bruce Pritchard gave gave his answer, they gave him a chance to cut a promo, like on Austin's version of Tough Enough. The promo he cut, I swear to God, I've heard Big Freaky cut better promos on this show. Grant, he didn't know who, who he was addressing them to because he can't tell p- people's voices apart. But I've heard him make pair of promos on this show. And Flair was like, you know what? Oh, woo, woo, you got it, you're in. Which makes Bruce Pritchard's input completely useless because all you needed was two people. And, and I'm sorry, if you're doing this gut check thing, you don't have the first person get a contract. You make it look like it's difficult and useful to get on the TNA roster. You don't do it the first time. You you grab a jobber from OBW that you don't want on the roster and have him not win. And then you say, well, I guess someone needs a bigger gut check than that or some bullshit like that. But anyway, if you're watching TNA, stop. If you're thinking about watching TNA, don't. Go see the Avengers instead. That's what I did last Thursday, and it worked out in my benefit. Take care. Spike your hair point break. Peace, bitches. Wait. There's no blood on my headphones, which means blood's not leaking out of my ears. Okay. Which means the aneurysm that I thought I was having, I am not actually having. Okay. Um, he makes Gosh, no so sense. Subtle. He makes absolutely no sense. Okay. The guy that volunteered to cover TNA <laughs> for the website is no longer watching TNA. Mm-hmm. All right. First off... Every reality TV show, except for The Voice, you don't need unanimous consent or unanimous decisions to move on. Okay. I mean, the, and, and The Voice is completely different. The Voice yeah. has the Voice. They pick people to be on team. Yeah. 
So yeah. using so it's the, not even like that. Using the voice. In American is wrong. Idol, you need to only need two votes. So that whole rant. Russell, that, man, you watch too much TV, man. <laughs> so that whole Stop rant. Stop watching daytime TV. Stop watching reality television. What are you doing with your life? I have no idea. Watching oh, TV. God, that's a zombie. But I want to watch Oprah. <laughs> There's uh, no he's zombies. In college. Anyhow, I'm so that whole rant that he spent on it not being reality television supposed to be reality television is out the window guys that's what they're going for it's, it, it, it is it's their mimicking <laughs> of 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 reality television i i like the concept yeah yeah and as far i love as the, the concept the only thing i agree with mad mike about is the fact that i don't believe the first guy should have won Hell because no. both both from the fact of what he mentioned, how I don't think the first person to win should have or should have had it should have won, but also he wasn't really that good. Yeah, I, well, I think I think they wanted to do that because it's like they want to show that this is a real opportunity instead of oh, it's just going to be a bunch of jobbers. So I guess, and, yeah. and for them saying oh, they're just pulling somebody random out of the Indies. This guy came from OVW. Uh, I think Al Snow is still involved with OVW and training down there. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so it's it, it's just like anybody else eventually getting a contract. It's like their FCW. This is like them coming up through an NXT, but they don't have NXT. Mm -hmm. So, and as far as that goes, as far as the gut check goes, I think it's an interesting concept. Let's see how it develops. It was a little weird they didn't have judges when they had the first week of it, uh, but that's fine. They had this mm -hmm. other thing to tie up Flair with. That's fine. They had the guy on two shows that creates drama. It, it, it hopefully. Maybe not you, know, you, but you know it gives you a reason to watch the next week, and they they want you to tune in next week for a reason. Um, and I hope they continue with it. I hope this becomes a monthly thing. That and the uh, open fight night. I and the everybody should challenge Robert Rude, Rude is bullshit because not everybody else is going to want to fight the world champion when it's not worth the title. Right, exactly, and that's the thing with the. I like the open fight night concept. Yes, I think it's a really good way to promote wrestling. It's you know. And it's going to help with feuds and stuff like that. But the, for those that cl to clarify, they defend for each time they have an open fight night. What, uh, one champion defends against someone that is picked by Hulk Hogan. Yeah, it's not like if you challenge a champion, it's a champion match. Nope. Because that know? would just, that would defeat the whole purpose of everything. Also, oh, yeah. can I remind you guys that this is televised professional wrestling? Yes. So. To start off, it's scripted. Yep. So, even though the lowest guy on the roster could have an opportunity to say, hey, I'm going to fight Robert Roode for the heavyweight championship because, well, I want to be the champion, it's still scripted, which means that guy is going to get a 10-second match and be completely squashed. Just like anything else. It's exactly. It's convenient uh, placement of people that interact right. with each other, guys. I mean, it, this this is it. Like, oh, why doesn't this guy come up? Because the writers didn't do, do it that way. <laughs> right. it's, I mean, come it. on, guys. It, it's fake. It's fake wrestling. Right. Let's just let, like, let it, it be. If it's it truly happen. open fight night, I could walk into TNA Arena and be like, I want to challenge Robert Roode hey, for the Jeremy championship. Did, why the hell not, right? So um, I would get in the actually, ring. I, tried that. I would get in the ring with Robert Roode. He would punch me in the face. The arena would boo, and that would be the match. There you go. Nobody yeah. wants that. <laughs> um, but no, I thought they started off right with the whole, you know, Devon came out who had to defend his title anyways because it's a TV title. I'm glad they, they made that call. Yeah, they made um, the call that you defend the TV title. And he's title like, hey, game. I want to beat up Bully Ray. Or Bubba. Um, <clears throat> I mean, that was great. It was like two guys that probably should have locked horns again, you know. Especially now the boys build it up a little bit and everything. It's like, that was a perfect call-out moment there. Or somebody like uh, Tess Mocker who said, I want to beat the, w the women's champion again to prove it wasn't a fluke. Okay, that that's, that's, that's cool, you know. Um, yeah. And knowing you're going to get a title match, definitely. Um, I mean, I, I, and they do this once a month. There's an article I tweeted earlier today uh, from Bischoff saying that they're they're going to do a reformatting overall of their shows. Yeah, like there was four points to it, wasn't it? Exactly. Like you have the the cool off show right after the pay per view where you're resetting the storylines. I mean, we all see this every time after a pay per view. Okay, mm -hmm. what are they doing? Where are they moving these people to set them up for the next show they want you to buy? Um, yeah, and and they said how they're restructuring the in between because really, if you look at something like WWE, you got that 
kind of cool off show. And then it's like, okay, what's John Cena's encounter going to be this week with Brock Lesnar? You know, um, and, and there's rhyme and reason to that. But it's just like, okay, something else is going to happen. And then, okay, we're not getting our match yet. We have to wait. You know, right. Um, I mean, it's really kind of an obvious format. So I, it's good to hear that they're kind of trying to shake it up a bit. Yeah, they're trying to do um, something different, and they're and if they keep it, if they keep a continuity with it, mm-hmm. I think they they can really do something great. Uh, with the gut check thing, um, I do hope that they actually do bring in some indie wrestlers and not just OVW talent. But I mean, you know, even if they do, there's a lot of great OVW talent. But I just would love for them to maybe. Not just limited to there, but I mean, pick people from like yeah. you know. I think I read something like that that they wanted to do some OVW guys, but they also are going to open it up to the indie guys. Well, um, they're, they're doing gut check all over the place at, at right. some of the places where they're doing the live shows, uh, where it is for the indie guys to come in and get looked at. Uh, I think you have to pay to go to it. As an True. Guy, but I mean, but if you're looking to get in the TNA, and no, it was, to... and it's a lot like because I think it is like a camp kind of thing for them, like like a day camp, like a day camp. That doesn't sound right. Yeah, but, but know, I mean, like, 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 like a seminar, like when TNA like, is opening a daycare. <laughs> <laughs> like, they are gonna get adopted. Well, you know, you've heard about like 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 uh, you know, say Bret it's Hart like, is gonna come uh, for the and, and do like a seminar thing, and then you know, any wrestlers pay and they go, you know whatever happens there I, and that's, that's how i take this it's like it, it's, it's like kind of like what taz did back like in a yeah like his few, finishing few camp. months ago or yeah something. The, the, right. it, it was like the team da- taz dojo and i, I know yeah, like bobby the shields finishing was up school, there i think that's what they called it yeah yeah like it's for established indie talent but they review tapes and go over what you need to do and right. Stuff like that, and that's why I take a lot of this gut check is, is is something like that where they like go over okay, you know they they go over it's like okay you're doing this good you don't you're doing that bad uh, you got a good look you don't got a good look and you know maybe a couple would be like you know okay this guy let's sign this guy you know hoping they find a few diamonds in the rough just going out there, um, which is you know good they're reaching out and they're finding new talent you know there's something going on there, um, and everybody needs to do something like that. Um, and it's really cool that they've turned it into a TV slash semi quasi reality. Let's let's face it. If it's, it's if you're saying it's a reality show concept, uh, you know, is it really any different than the reality shows in realness? Um, and, and and I liken it to I mentioned this on the Facebook. Uh, it's kind of their <laughs> the version. The Facebook. It's kind of their Sorry. version of uh, the Diva Book Search or the or the uh, Tough Enough that was on SmackDown in the long run. Yeah, really. That's why I take it as, and I think it's cool as that as, as that kind of concept. Yes, they've already predetermined who's going to fucking get signed and not. Now, but, is it more like is it more like uh, NXT minus all the you know? I think it's more like NXT. Be, wow, it was still a reality show esque competition and not the whacked out storyline show uh, where mm-hmm. nobody we know nobody's really watching in the states except um, for me and Sorg, except for me and Wrestle Fan. That's yep. right. <laughs> Um, it, it, from Sonic and the first Sonic uh, in the chat room is pretty a Dixie D- Daycare from uh, the Alexer in the chat. Uh, but Sonic first he's kind of uh, surprised that well first Chachi wants the job on TNA and that we're actually kind of giving TNA praise on here. Um, They're doing good stuff. I we're mean, not giving TNA praise. No, uh, I will. Yeah, no. We're, we're just disagreeing with Mad Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, no, I think I, I like the concepts and I like how they've been going so far. I just watched both episodes today. I love the last two weeks. And I, I, I kind of enjoy how it goes. Um, uh, Sonic asks, how would TNA bring in somebody to fail on a contract? One time appearance fee and house show time, maybe? Um, doesn't mean they won't come back. No, that doesn't mean anything. Well, what was Destination X? How many guys they brought in for Destination X that didn't get contracts? I don't think Shima got a t- contract right off the bat off of that. No. So there were a lot of there were a lot of talents that didn't get contracts for that. Yeah, I mean TNA the, the, the wheels are turning with these guys. They have their eyes on a lot of guys with OVW and whatever they're they're talking to are guys down there setting up the ring, helping them out. You know, I mean, there's a lot happening there. Um, also, he says he, he hopes that it will lead to Flair having some face time, even if he's he's the Simon Cowell. Yeah, and as far as like Flair saying the the you know what I changed my vote. 
uh, in front. That of was Flair room. being Flair that's, and that's, not knowing what the Flair, fuck was going on. Yeah, that's just Flair <coughs> being Terry Funk. Flair up. doesn't know what's going on. No, anyway, no, that so they'll, just... yeah. <laughs> Any awkward moment with Flair that's in front of a crowd that they can't edit out, it's hey, Flair's fault. I, I was more annoyed when the, when uh, he the kid uh, Alex Silva like was first cutting his promo and he was like talking to the fans. Ric Flair interrupts and saying, "Don't talk to the Marks. Talk to talk to us. Start over." I'm like, whoa. <laughs> You yeah, that was. You guys, you guys honestly, he Flair. should be talking to us. <laughs> uh, what's up, Bobby? You guys got to be fair to Flair. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Jack Evans still doesn't have a contract, says uh, the Alexer. So, yeah, well, I, I want to see how it goes. To be honest, I, I really do want to see how it goes. I, 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 I <coughs> it's already off to a better start than the uh, what was it, the Bound for Glory series. Mm-hmm. Or, or the rankings that they had for about a month and well, a half. The Bound for Glory system. Yeah, they like to play with rankings. The Bound for Glory point system thing worked for about a month or two. But then everybody started getting hurt and they just they just went. It, it was a little bit harder to keep sort of a continuity with it. I think with something like gut check, it's like it's it's that hard to like, you know, Unless everyone fucking wins a contract, then I'd get kind of annoyed. But, like, you know, I definitely think that they have a chance to really do something good with this. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Okay. There's. Oh, oh, go ahead. I have something. <clears throat> so. Can we get off TNA talk? Yes, we're going to right now. <laughs> I promise. Yes. Right now. So, last night during Raw, uh, a thought hit me. And, quite frankly, I couldn't believe that I've never, like, thought this out at any great details before in my history of watching wrestling, considering that I've been watching wrestling a very long time at this point in my life. Now, gotcha. Did you figure out wrestling's fake? No, 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 <laughs> no. It's still real to him, It's it. still real to me, even though earlier <laughs> I said it was scripted. <laughs> um, so last night I was watching Cody Rhodes versus The Big Show for the Intercontinental Championship. For the umpteenth time. Okay. And I sat there, <clears throat> and I decided that there's not really a difference between the Intercontinental Championship and the World Championship. Follow me. You guys can laugh at me as soon as I'm finished, I promise. No, I think I see where you're going. <laughs> However, uh, the, de- the dictionary.com definition, definition of intercontinental is extending between or taking place between continents. <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. World is defined as the Earth. The Earth. So, by those definitions, the only difference between the World Championship and the Intercontinental Championship is the fucking oceans. (laughs) So, wait a minute. So, that means you can have a match in the water. Only for the World World Championship. Uh Uh-huh. Well, I got an idea. That's what what they're going to do. Okay, they... So now we all know you can only have a world you can you only have a world title Gulf of Mexico match. Right. You can't have an intercontinental title Gulf of Mexico match. Correct. So therefore I know because I've seen a lot of Gulf of like, Mexico matches. Like we all know, we all know that the difference between the world championship and the intercontinental championship is just the the ranking level. I got However, an there's no actual difference in the titles. And actually, so Chachi, so nowadays, you nowadays three, the ranking yeah. level's not that off. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have three world champions. You're laughing, Sorg. Um, I told you to yeah, hold you your know, laughter yeah. until the finish. Uh, no, 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 uh, not you, because in the chat room, <laughs> uh, the Alexa says the Seventh Seas Championship. Uh, there's the Atlantis Championship. Um, the I was gonna say, I was gonna say, Santino is your new Oceanic Champion. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've had the European that, champion. That's why that US makes me really champion. happy. Do I not have I mean, a valid point? You have a valid you point. Do. I'm, how I'm has glad it, you said it because I've been thinking. It. How has it taken us 20 odd years did I, did to I question see, this? Did I see something? I, I, I swear I saw something on, on a random board or, or Facebook or something that, that was talking about, like, for instance, RWA, uh, about how the world title or the PA regional title would be more important than the world or the RWA title. 
in sequence for some reason. Hmm. I, like, yeah, like, I, I saw that too. It would be. It would. And it here's would. why. Okay. I can explain this. All right. <laughs> And this is according to Wikipedia, so we can all know that that doesn't necessarily mean it's true. But, but I'll it, take it as such. Yes. In order for a world championship to be technically considered a world championship, it has to have been defended outside of its ori- origin country. Okay. Right, right. Okay? Therefore, and just, I hope this doesn't get me in trouble, because I, I, I love working for RWA and IWC. However... Those belts have not been dis- defended outside of the country. I will halt you. I believe IWCs may have. Yeah, I think I, I, have, it. I, think I, I don't know. It I can't. was defended outside. I know they had they had an international championship, but I think somebody took that belt overseas. I I'm think it was yeah, I think so. Did they, Shima? It was Shima. Did they actually wrestle for the IWC title? Uh, yeah, the title probably. has to be on the line in Pro- order for it to be most considered. Most likely, if they took it over there, yes. Because it's just like anything else. Like We've seen ROH championships before they were huge. Uh, well, well, that's, a, yeah, the, that's the, the thing. Like, Back Ring of Honor, Sino- like Ring of Honor championships yeah. have been sanctioned, defended in IWC shows. Mm-hmm. But that's inside the country. Well, that's, that's, well no, like, I mean, like, that's the same thing concept. With, okay. the same that's concept. the thing with ROH. Like, when Samoa Finch Joe was Shima- ROH... Samoa Joe was ROH champion, and then he was going. Uh, people were saying that he was the man that made the ROH title a world title because he defended it out of the country. Okay, that's fine then. Okay, but okay. Wheels. Yes. Has RWA's title been defended outside of the country? No. Okay. Is it? Is it? Is, it, is, it, is, it as a country? is it declared as a world title for you guys? Yes, it no, is. It's, it's considered the RWA Heavyweight Championship. Okay. Okay, the, fair enough. Not world heavyweight. Okay. okay, well, then that helps me prove my point even more. Okay. In this case, the PA Regional Championship would be a more prestigious title than the RWA Heavyweight Championship. The RWA Heavyweight Championship would be considered the main title for anyone within the RWA. The PA Regional Championship would be considered a title that is above the RWA. Because it's defended in more than just RWA. Because it's, regional. Yes, because it goes across the state, not in just not in West Newton, PA, and the RWA. Hmm. Was, e- was ECW's title ever defended outside of the U.S.? I, yes, it was. I, I want to say it Of was. all of the titles, and I, I, obviously we've seen WWE and I don't, probably TNA's belts being defended outside of the yeah. The oh, oh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. They gotta um, be. It, out of all of them, I would say ECWs would probably be less questionable. Well, I think mean, can- Canada counts. It does count. <laughs> it, it, no, it does. I mean, all, all, yeah. all a, a RWA wrestler has to do wheels is take the belt to Move Canada. 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 Yeah. And yeah. wrestle for it. World title! Right. <laughs> so, I mean... and. and and like I said, I don't know how it's taken me 20 odd years <laughs> to, realize to realize that there is absolutely no difference between the Intercontinental Championship and the World Championship as far as the actual title goes. Like, And I'm not talking about the, the championship title belt. I'm talking about the title of the championship. Yeah. Like there's no abs- there's absolutely no difference in between those titles except for oceans. That's why I do like when uh, guys like like for indies like they don't do oh we got a heavyweight title like everybody else. Like there is the intense title for AIW, you know, I, right? Or, you know stuff like that. Like 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 or uh, does an anarchy championship wrestling have a different name for their they title? call they call they just call it the anarchy I think they call it the anarchy heavyweight title. Yeah, or that or, or they, either Pretty that or they call it the pure a- title. Anarch- wow. The or they call title. it the Anarchy title. Well, the pure title was a different concept because it was for a certain. I wasn't. There, was it a certain rule it was, set or something? For yeah, that? it was, it was a different rule different set. Different match rules. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's like having a hardcore belt, right? Yeah. You know, sure. but like they have. Sure. I think. I think there were some cool ideas. Like another one for ACW, they have the uh, Young Guns U thirty title, which if you are, you can only win the belt or a challenge for it if you're under the age of thirty. Okay. <laughs> and so it's kind of it's kind of like a it's like. It's like a Chikara Young Lions. Cup. Like yeah, yeah, like Young Lions. Um, where is one? Uh, there was an interesting one. I, I don't know if I mentioned it on the show here. I know I was talking to some of you guys about this. Uh, but there's a where is it? Where is it? The, the Divas? No, not the Divas. Uh, FCW, of course. Uh, WWE's kind of training ground. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me bring up 
Are you talking about the the Florida Fifteen? Yeah, where it's like a fifteen minute Iron Man match. Am I yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's all it's all fifteen minute Iron Man matches. I got to see one of these because I randomly saw. Uh, uh, oh, and by the way, I just figured found out that a uh, friend of the show, Corey Graves, formerly SJK, is the tag team champion. Yes, uh, indeed. Florida tag title. Ah, uh, Florida heavyweight title. Ah. Uh, mm-hmm. Um. It, they know, so they know what's up. At, at this, uh, so at this juncture in the discussion, it, it seems as if you want your title to mean anything. You should name it after the state, whether <laughs> rather than uh, conceptually hang up, hang out problems, but uh, uh, rather than naming it after the company that it's in. Yeah, and I mean to answer even you, Chachi, with the PA regional, the PA regional was defended, if I remember correctly, by Jock Sampson outside of PA in Ohio. Yeah, what well, whether the European championships and US championships have been defended outwardly or inwardly, you know, how many times the European championship actually get defended outside of the US in comparison, right. you know. So I mean, it's a representative thing. I always thought the Euro ch- title was kind of weird as far as that goes uh when somebody like Road Dog holds it or X-Pac, you know, but you know. Hence why I think it disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like we have way too many belts, and now they kind of have that same. They problem. still have too many belts. Yeah, exactly. I like that. If I call it anything, I call it the FCW 15 minutes of fame championship from the chat. So, Aww. Aww. Yeah, it's a cool concept, though. But yeah. but I like that. I like that. So uh, from something very serious and high 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 thought process, I take you to something I believe Chachi submitted here. Oh uh, great! Avengers Triple X. Don't get too excited. Guys. Oh yes, there oh. it is. <laughs> China. And I forgot She-Hulk. about this. Uh, uh, this was sent to me by uh, from Rick. He, uh, not basic Rickness, but friend of mine, Rick, who listens to the show and watches wrestling all the time. Uh, he sent me that. He found it on YouTube. And and I just threw up in my mouth a little bit, guys. And yes, it's. Uh, I just came a little bit. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's Avengers Triple X, a porn parody. Oh. With China as She-Hulk. Um, and he sent me this while I was at work. And he's like, this is definitely safe for work. He's oh, okay. like, it's looks just... legit. <laughs> <laughs> looks legit. Wow. <laughs> as the Elixir put in the chat room, Jesus wept. Spider-Man wasn't in the movie! <laughs> yeah, I want well, Spider-Man. It's, it's yeah. more are, of you, are, you gonna, are we really going to talk about how, you know... Logical, the porn industry is. Hey, why not? We're doing how logical TNA is. Are you fucking kidding me? (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, back to yeah. Why don't we just do what is actually? I I think Mad Mike wrestling related. I think Matt. Well, first of all, I think Mad Mike should have a new scale for his TNA reports. Where what made more sense this week's porn viewing or Impact? (laughs) That's true. (laughs) I think it'd be a good spin, and I'll get the hit. Sorry, Riz. What were you saying? But back to China in Aww. in this porn. Aww. Uh, Aww. 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 China. China's. <coughs> China. Oh. Yeah. She's no Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> <laughs> and who is really? China. Uh. China smash. Uh, she, she's she, no, she's Mark Ruffalo. If Mark Ruffalo got railed in the vagina by like a hundred fucking penises, and you don't you don't talk about Mark Ruffalo like that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't talk about Mark Ruffalo like that. Oh, no. His performance was a revelation, Russell fan. The, As a the longtime Avengers? comic book fan who's been nothing but sad when it comes to uh, Hulk movies. movies. This is what I said. This is what I said. couldn't save that motherfucker. And Mark Ruffalo, you're the performance of a lifetime. So you shove that up your hundred. This is what I said earlier. The the Avengers Incredible Hulk was the Incredible Hulk of Incredible Hulks. Nobody laughed. I (laughs) know. I'm still trying to get the picture. Bob Bobby laughed and that's all that matters. Uh, I thought it was funny. (laughs) CM Punk got into a word of wars. World of wars. On Twitter. No. Words. What Words. happened? I got to get this. Oh boy! It was Russell fan. It was Russell fan. Yeah, he's, the o- he's the only one on the show that's ever talked about this. 
<laughs> the rest of us, no, the rest of us give no fucks. Well, I, it's I tried to that, but he to him. actually posted. The only, the only thing I, the only thing I meant, the only thing I mentioned about it is that maybe WWE might want to do another Twitter class. <laughs> LB, did you post this? I did. Yeah. Oh. Damn it! I was wrong. <laughs> It was a good call, though. It is something a wrestle fan would Wait, do. Wait, were we talking about the cilantro and the teeth incident? No. No? So the thing before the cilantro and the teeth. Why is it even talking about this? What? <laughs> he told the that he said Then talk should... about it. CM Punk has cilantro in his teeth. He had. Had. And then he probably it was, still had. And then it was replaced with Cranky Vince's cock. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what he said. Are you serious? Did he really I say love that? Cranky Vince. I missed that part. No, Cranky Vince said that. Uh, oh, okay. And while we're on parody Twitter accounts, can we... Uh, well, while we're no. on, on your shot, where the fuck are you going over there? <laughs> I'm sweating, <laughs> therefore I'm moving to let more air in. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow. Is that, that, that does make you sweat. It does. It's a warm couch. I, it's comfy yeah, as hell, I, but it's I, I warm. Sweating what happens? I was sitting there, but I think that was because lunchbox was right next to me. What happens is oh, yeah. you get in the couch and it kind of like swallows you, and it covers you up, and you're in a nice warm cocoon. It gives of you a comfy. big hug. You're in a nice warm cocoon <laughs> of comfiness, and it gets you all <laughs> hot. Comfiness. And so I was sitting up because I don't want it to cocoon me and make me too hot, and I'm sweating. Anyways, your point. Dante is going to turn into a beautiful sweaty butterfly. Will you <laughs> shut up? <laughs> uh, can we can we bring up the fact that John Cena rules? Uh, has a t-shirt out now? What? Poor yeah. Glazer. Uh, I've, well, I, don't have, I don't have a link for it, but one of his sayings Poor is Glazer. on a t-shirt. It's from Barbershop. I that window. shirt, by the way. What's that? I ordered that shirt. <laughs> yeah, Barbershop window right. came out with a Wait, wait, wait let's go back. Shirt. What is the cilantro thing? Let's backtrack here. What is the cilantro <laughs> in your teeth comment? Well, because well, the dirt sheets were reporting on the whole uh, CM Punk Twitter thing, and then uh, Punk ooh. replied that the dirt sheets should talk about how he's had cilantro in his teeth for, uh, like, he, had, he got cilantro in his teeth, and then something about them eating dick or something. <laughs> that makes me really sad because cilantro is disgusting, and I didn't. I thought CM Punk. It is disgusting. It is disgusting. It is pretty disgusting. Wow. Cilantro is delicious on my tacos. Fuck you. It tastes like soap. <laughs> Fuck you. Okay, something wow. more relevant. What so is you have a thing? genetic predisposition against cilantro. I don't think it tastes <laughs> like soap. I just think it's gross. I think if you put too much on it, it tastes like soap. It ruins salsa. Mm. <laughs> That's wow, okay, good okay. discussion for a wrestling uh, show. Anyways. What the fuck? All right, CM Punk gotten into a, a tense discussion about uh, gay marriage, and it didn't really stay civil. And he told someone to go kill themselves, and another fan to go drink bleach. But he did later apologize for it. That's yeah. the story. Okay, yeah, he tweeted: "Dirt sheets need to report that I have cilantro in my teeth. Then swallow tax." Somebody had a bad day. Someone had a bad day. I'm failing to understand what part of this is wrong. <laughs> the part that I had a pro I mean, because it's CM Punk, who's it's the not WWE champion of WWE, who is a multi traded company, not who has the all world, these sponsors. I'm just sa I'm not saying he's wrong, honestly. I'm, we're not going to get into a whole gay marriage thing, but I think he's right in what he said. And I would have said the same thing, but I'm not the WWE champion. Here, okay. I'll say this again when I think that like what this is what I'm before. sorry. Is. Did he get reprimanded when he said the guy had a vagina on tape? Did, did and my response to that was the Rock and John Cena, their feud was all about them having vaginas. Mm -hmm. But okay. I don't think WWE cares about the vaginas. Telling a fan to kill before. themselves, maybe. CM Punk can say whatever he wants. Because yeah. that's what brought him to the dance, and that's what got him popular. He just says whatever he wants. He fucking says wrestling every single week on television, which is apparently a no-no. He does what he wants, and he polices himself because 
I, as we saw, he said, I'm sorry, I was having a bad day, and that's fine, and then he doesn't get in shit for it. There you go, there you go. And, <laughs> and, and, and I understand, like, Russell fans putting this, and other people are putting this under a microscope because of the Be A Star campaign, and I'm sorry, not people are going to be people, you know? Uh, there's it's Be A Star. Be a it's not star like thing. he's targeting and bullying people. He just had a comment. Chachi in the first row with your hand up, please. I don't think I've ever seen CM Punk on a Be A Star commercial. Yeah, no, he, he was. Ha- he has been. Okay. He was on that one with like him and Alicia Fox. Yeah, he was that one that was, that one that was talk- He was the one that was like you know the a lot of the worst things uh, were stuff you can't repeat. Oh yeah, I remember that. Called. Oh okay. So yeah. All yeah, right. Well then, let's let's break this down to its most basic point. CM Punk is just a regular guy. Exactly. He's human. <laughs> yeah. Therefore. When you break it down, even when when you're having a, a heated discussion about something, did you just wink at me? You just winked at me. I saw you wink. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyhow, so he's a winker. <laughs> Who winked at you? Who? <laughs> I, I, I was looking over because I have a habit of looking at you when I talk. Yeah. And, <laughs> and DJ Man Sauce over there <laughs> winked. <laughs> Man Sauce. <laughs> he, he he winked out of nowhere and it threw me off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <Wow. laughs> when it was only when you get into a maybe, heated discussion, maybe and you the, realize that the person you're talking to is a complete and utter moron. Thank you. Maybe, maybe this whole thing is about gay marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when, when you're having, when you're trying to have a, an intelligent discussion with someone, as CM Punk tends to do on Twitter, and I know this because I follow CM Punk on Twitter. Mm-hmm. CM Punk will actually sit there and have a discussion with you. Right. Mm-hmm. Especially, and if he thinks you're a moron, you're a moron. Especially, no, no, he doesn't go that far. Especially if you're on one side of a topic and he's on the other. And if at first it seems as if you're going to have an actual good discussion about it, mm-hmm. then CM Punk will have a Twitter discussion with you about said topic. However... All discussions get to the point where one side's just like, fuck you, you're a moron. Mm-hmm. No, I understand. Yeah. And, and I, that's and, the and, that's the point the discussion got to. And I think and I agree that yes, it, it, it yes, it's CM Punk being CM Punk. And I, I think it's really, you know, that's the, that's his personality and that's the way he is. But that's like the thing I mentioned about maybe WWE should do another Twitter class. It's like what we did. It's like what we talked about a couple yeah, weeks it ago. About so the, well in the no, first no, hold place. on, hold on. It's like it's like what we talked about a couple weeks ago with like social networking. I don't think that's the place for so- someone in that you know position to go on to talk about gay marriage. What, no matter what your opinion is, because you're going to have those people that are come going to come up and say stupid shit like that. Do you think? So? I don't know. Who cares. What's that? Do you think he cares what like if he's a big star or not? Because he's well, I, doing I mean, what he's gonna do because he, he knows he he knows his views and he wants people to know his views. It's, it's not like he, oh I shouldn't say this because I'm afraid of the I'm gonna get reprimanded and all that stuff. He's gonna say what he wants to say because he's defending someone who's not being heard. He's the because champion he, of the people. Yes, he's the uh, voice he of the up voice. For you. He tells I think as, he tells them to swallow tax because you can't. Because he has the platform. Listen. Exactly. Yeah. He has more <laughs> followers than you. And he's telling <laughs> people to do stuff. If CM Punk were to get fired overnight, CM Punk would continue talking on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Exactly how he has been. Yeah. Only instead of talking from the road, he would be in, uh, I don't know, Elizabeth, or no, we're in West Virginia next week. Yeah. So next week, he would be in West Virginia wrestling for IWC. Two days after that, who knows where he'd be? He'd be in TNA. I mean, mean, he would still. He'd be in TNA in the drop of a hat. He would still be in a ring doing what he does. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. He's still going to say what he says. Yeah. And then, you know, it's not about, I just, I just think for, and it's being in a position in WWE, you got to be more aware of that kind of stuff is what I'm saying. Like I said, I think he's right for what he said and, you know, whatever, but 
you got to be aware. You know? So let me let me ask you this, Russell fan. You, you're saying that Twitter isn't really the place to have a discussion like that, right? Yeah. So what are we allowed to talk about on Twitter? Poop. No, we're not allowed. We're not allowed no. to talk about poop on Twitter. We're not allowed to talk about poop on Twitter. Well, it's kind of a personal role. You, you know what it? we're allowed to do? Oh, sorry, Zor. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I said my piece. Go ahead. I was going to say, you know what we're allowed to do on Twitter? What? Endlessly post form spring answers and questions. <laughs> you know what? Fuck you guys. <laughs> Fucking dicks. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, according to you, we're not allowed to have meaningful discussions. No, I don't think. I, I'm not That's exactly what you said. Discussions on things like gay marriage Man, or religion. I, I, Russell or fan, fucking... am I not allowed to call you a fetus on Twitter anymore? Is that what's going on here? No. Russell oh, fan. Talk about religion on Twitter. Somebody tell the Dalai Lama to close his account. <laughs> no. Listen, oh, bro, keep it down. Can't talk about politics on Twitter. I better stop following the Obama campaign and that sweet, sweet Michelle Obama. Mm. Yes. Mm-hmm. What the fuck is she on Twitter? Can't talk about politics on Twitter. Hmm. What can you oh, talk you- about? Can't talk about poop on Twitter. Can't talk about gay marriage. So uh, there goes some of my closest friends who uh, take their take their plights to the to the. You know, still Twitter. free speech Twitter. Can't talk I'm about sports. Saying, I'm just, yeah, see, basically, WrestleFan, you're basically censoring us. Basically, basically or killing a WrestleFan, WrestleFan, why are you shutting us down? Why are you trying to quiet us? WrestleFan, there's no reason to be the man. We just want to be people. <laughs> I'm moving on. Wow. <laughs> no, don't. No, you can't. No. You have no right no. to say that we're moving on. When you started this discussion, <laughs> I didn't. You so did. Punk on Twitter. Nope you you started this, and now you're trying to change the subject just because you don't like where it's going. God, I missed. Hey, the game. drink bleach, bitch. Drink some bleach. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you're really still allowed to say that stuff. See, and you're now the world famous Chachi. I think you should issue an apology. I'm not. I'm not apologizing for shit, fetus. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to wrestling. What else is going on? Uh, uh, somebody posted something about yoga in the show notes. What? Yep, that's Did true. That's me once again. Not allowed, not allowed to talk about yoga. What's happened? I actually nope. saw this well, video. Gotta, gotta I want to say I actually, yoga. I actually saw this video and I posted it to a client that does yoga. So. Hmm. There's uh, uh he was a I don't I can't remember the specifics. He was a war veteran, I believe. Oh shit. He was a paratrooper and he took one too many uh, jumps. Yeah, and it ruined his legs, ruined his knees. They said he'd never walk without assistance again, and he started doing DDP yoga. And that motherfucker does handstands and all kinds of shit. There you go. Here's uh, a all thanks, all thanks to the bang. Actually, there's a little bit about the paratrooper stuff. Um, so Show here he is. He's, he's uh, what well, I think he's around forty. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, has a bit, a bit overweight. Like DDP talks about how far out his belly is. He's on two crutches to get around. Uh, and here he is moving around a bit. And to the point where he's doing headstands mm-hmm. over ten months, I believe. Uh, so that's what DDP is doing, making people awesome again. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, this isn't this isn't a, a new story. Uh, the, the, actually, the yoga person that I, I coordinate with a lot at my one job, she actually was in a very, in a worse position than this. She couldn't even move. Um, they, you know, she was just just completely done until she started doing yoga and you know it doesn't matter what point you're at you're gonna do chair yoga even and now she's an instructor and can do amazing yoga positions and things and everything um and now she kind of has a new release on so uh that, i don't know what this has to do with wrestling other than it's ddp but, <laughs> but, no, but no, yeah i saw this good well, good remember remember back when uh when we we first covered that you know, DDP was always doing yoga for guys, and we made all this so much fun of it and shit like that. And he stuck with it, and yeah. uh, he fucking really did well with it. I mean, it's a mm-hmm. it's a huge program; it's super popular now. So good for you, DDP. Well and done. Actually, and I hear a lot of stuff about a lot of the wrestlers, like uh, Shawn Michaels, of course, with his his you know story back problems. That's one of the reasons he came back was he got on the DDP yoga stuff, and that that mm-hmm. needed him strengthening his back more. Um, so I mean, go, go, it, it, I, I'm really, I, I, as much as I haven't done it, uh, but I've seen a lot of it and see what it's done for people. Um, I, 
this is the yoga's yoga's for real, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, we, were, we were actually talking about yoga a little bit on the awesome cast earlier tonight and stuff you can get for like you know your Wii or your connect to kind of get into it um, nobody has a Wii. what's that nobody has a Wii anymore, anymore. it's all in the trash <laughs> but uh, and, I, and i'm curious about the you know uh, the, what you know what's so great about the, and that's the other thing guys don't get into yoga is or zumba or or you know some of the other things zumba. um you hardly <laughs> what <laughs> get, well, don't get me started on zumba um, but, uh, but, you know, Why it, not? we it, want to hear your thoughts on Zumba. So we're, come Zumba. on. Well, this is a Zumba mayhem show. <laughs> Actually, I kind of had an episode of a Zumba mayhem show we recorded a while ago. So you can go find that on the net, uh, in the archives over at sorgatronmedia.com if you really want to. Um, but, uh, but I don't know. It's, it's a nice gateway, you know, somebody like DDP, you know, to get people into something that's been more kind of feminized, um, uh, but can be helpful. So. Great. Great stuff. All right. What else we got to talk about here? Uh, hmm. What star? Wait, Ricardo Rodriguez got a. Uh, Ricardo Rodriguez was busted for speeding, trying to get to raw. He, uh, he accepted. He, he knew he was busted. It was, he did like, it was like 70 or 75 and a 55, something like that. So, uh, he paid his $200 fine and said, uh, you got me. Was uh, it in Mexican. that sweet Porsche that uh, he that uh, what is his name had last night? Alberto Darío, that guy. <laughs> wow. All mm-hmm. right. Anything else we want to touch on before we get out of here, guys? Uh, don't miss next week's show when Russell Fan gets beaten up. That's right. Um, yeah, we do have <laughs> when uh, I get stoned to death verbally and physically. <laughs> We're scheduled to have Ryan Edmonds of RWA on next week. Uh, yes, the one we've been talking about that has had an interesting match with his girlfriend a few months ago. Um, interesting match with his girlfriend in a ring. In a ring. Um, <laughs> he was, so, he was well, talking well, about sex. Yeah. It's time to find out what you learned from wrestling. Hey, sword. Hey, Sorg. Well, why, why, why? Sorg. Yeah? What'd you learn from wrestling this week, big guy? Um, I, I, I learned it's fun to bring new people into the Google Hangout that are wrestling fans. Awesome. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> What's up, Cheryl, if you're listening? Um, yeah, it's also nice to actually watch Raw and SmackDown on a TV when they're on oh. with people. Oh. So Wonderful. I was revisiting that concept again. Um... So are you uh, uncutting the cord? Is that what we're doing? Bring no, it off the no. duct tape? It's nice, nice change. Taping it back together? But then I see all the other crap on the TVs, and, and glad I'm not paying for it. So Your mother. There you go. Hey, Chashi. Yeah, what buddy. What did you learn in wrestling this week? I learned that I would much rather be the Intercontinental Champion <laughs> than I would the World Champion, because fuck Aqua, man. Wow. <laughs> there you go. DJ Lunchbox. Yes, sir. What would you learn from pants this week? From pants. Fuck them. That's what I learned. All right. How about wrestling? Uh, I learned that uh, Floyd Mayweather, in in addition to being an incredible boxer, has the greatest healing powers around. There you go. There you go. Uh, Riz, what'd you learn? Wrong. Because I learned that Big Show's pedo headbutt cures cancer. Yes. <laughs> oh. What? Oh, it looked like he had cancer. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wrestle fan, what'd you learn from stuff? Stuff this week. I learned from wrestling this week that me and Sorg are the only ones that get excited when NXT superstars are on shows other than NXT. Apparently, yeah. I was happy to see Maxine there. Yeah, she was Derek Bateman actually- was on SmackDown and fucking, yeah. 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 Uh, in the Hangout, what'd you guys learn? Wills, you want to go first? Uh, sure. Why not? Thank you, Bobby. I appreciate that, sir. You're welcome, sir. Uh, what did I learn? Oh, oh. I have learned I'm really starting to enjoy the Are You Serious stuff, especially if you keep watching. They have even more added to it, like like conversations of the Triple H puppet with Road Dog. Hmm. Did they do anything when Josh Matthews got hurt? No, he was still there. They just ignored it. Yep. All right, no continuity. He's on just doing his job. That's right. He's doing his job. Bobby. He's doing his job. Bobby? Uh, I learned two things this week. Paul Heyman makes it all better. 
And I am, I'll try to remain calm and not lose my shit over Layla again. <laughs> <laughs> did you, I got yelled at. Your, your dad, your dad had to set you straight. What did the I, I got yelled at and told to calm down. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> like there's nothing, nothing the there. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, well. There was a little bit. There was the Dalai Lama. Uh, for well, Lunchbox gets MVP award for the night, and the Dalai Lama line wins the internet. Oh, thanks. Who said that? Uh, new guy, the Elixir. Elixir. Thanks, Elixir. I appreciate it. <laughs> I it's love flip flops. What? I said I love flip flops. Okay. The shoes. I don't well, like flip flops. I figured they would, you meant the shoes. They oh, I good. love flip flops. Hey, Chachi. Yeah. You got something going on? Insert coin to begin.com three part exclusive. That's right. Three. I said exclusive three part interview with Mark Mears, voice actor for Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2, and Mass Effect 3. So tune in tomorrow to see what to see what nerdy shit he's gonna say next, because he is, after all, just a really big nerd. DJ Lunchbox, you got anything to plug? MonsterHaiku.org, ThoughtfulRiot.com. ThoughtfulRiot.com, Monster Haiku is pretty much over. You missed your opportunity, and you're a fucking loser. Yeah, fucker. <laughs> Not you, Sork, just the listener who doesn't know what that is. Um, yeah, ThoughtfulRiot.com and uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, where I made an interesting post about the return of Paul Heyman with... Which uh, already will eventually be proven wrong because apparently Paul Heyman is going to be back for a little while now. So we'll see where this goes. Flip flops <laughs> and flip flops. All right. Anything else? Anybody else got anything to plug out there? Uh, Insertcointobegin dot com. Uh, I'm there too. Oh, he's there too. I'm there too. Somewhere. RWA Live. And com. also Monday Night Raw coming to Pittsburgh next week. That's right. Flip-flops! Yeah, you know, all of us will go, and we'll have our phones, and we can still be in the Hangout. Yes! yes. Kind of I won't be in my myself. I won't be, but not be for long, because our batteries will die in 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. oh, well, well, they do have be, a charge station be, there. Yeah. 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 Me will just me hang out the charge channel. station. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. R- you're right, Sorg. RWALive.com. The, re- the rebirth of it. Yes, good job, um, Wheels, on working on that site. Uh, it's definitely thank you, thank you. a lot more. And you can find a link to the Wrestling Mayhem show right over there. That's right. So, um, Excellent. Hey, guys, go check it out, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Like we said before, at Twitter us, at Mayhem Show. Any comments or anything from the show, just tag it WMS or hashtag WMS319 uh, three, three, for this episode for any comments relating, relating to this. Uh, go to our Facebook and follow uh, the, our page, like our page, and follow, look for the Wrestling Mayhem Show open group where we have a lot of discussion. We're also on Google+. Plus. If you want to join us up here in the Hangouts, uh, if you follow us or circle us, we will circle you back and you'll have access to that every Tuesday night where we do this thing live at live.sorgatronmedia.com starting around about 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, and hey, go check us out. Contact us. Good times. Good times. At good, good times. Or phone us with your funny impressions and other comments at 412-206-WMS-09670. Uh, Riz is definitely not chilling the app there because it crashed, apparently. Yeah, um, it keeps on crashing when oh, I try no. to email you guys. Oh, there you go. Bug Still report. App, Submit those bug reports. Dollar ninety nine. Android, uh, Amazon App Store, and iOS. There we go. Back up. There it is. <coughs> I like flip flops. Shotzi likes flip flops. This has been your Wrestling Mayhem show. We'll be back next week. See you then. Mayhem out. out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.